morning everyone, hope you're all doing really well. It's my day off today, so I thought you guys might like to hang out with me for the day. I've got a little bit of plant maintenance to do. I thought you might like to see some of my new Christmas decor. And there's a few planty bits that I thought you might appreciate as well. First of all, I'm going to be making myself a delicious breakfast shake. And it's so delicious that I thought I'd share the recipe with you. I know this is a bit random, but it's just so delicious. I have to share it with you. And if you're not really one for breakfast or if you need to grab like a really quick lunch, this shake is absolutely amazing. If you like peanut butter ice cream or milkshake, you will love it. So all you need is some smooth peanut butter, some vanilla essence, ground cinnamon, some maple syrup, or alternatively you can use honey, some oat milk, again alternatively you can use almond milk, um, a quarter of a cup of ground oats, and one frozen banana, oh and a dash of salt. So I've just taken this banana out of the freezer. I just freeze them with the skins on and then you just you can just kind of peel the skin off. I'll do this off camera because it's a bit messy. I've already whizzed the quarter of a cup of oats in the blender. And then once I've peeled this, I will show you next what to do. So I've just chopped up the banana into chunks. You can either use a small banana or half a large one, or if you like it extra banana-y, you can use a whole banana. So I'm just going to be putting half a teaspoon of cinnamon into the oats. This is enough just to make one portion, by the way. So you're going to need half a cup of oat milk or almond milk. I found that oat milk tastes a bit nicer with this. So just going to roughly measure out half a cup. So I'm going to put the oat milk into the blender. And then I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of maple syrup. You can use half a teaspoon, but I like it a little bit sweeter, so I use one teaspoon. Vector's come to say hello. Next, I'm going to add in one heaped tablespoon of this peanut butter. Pretty heaped. Now I'm going to add in the banana chunks and finally the oats with cinnamon and a dash of salt. Just going to blend them for about 30 seconds in the blender. I also just remembered you need to chuck in a few ice cubes. And here we have it, the most delicious smoothie in history. You have to try it. As I said, if you're not a fan of kind of breakfast or if you need to grab a quick lunch or something, this is quite uh, filling and it is absolutely delicious. What do you think? If you're wondering what this is, it's a little home assistant robot. He's got an Alexa built into him. Um, you can ask him the time, put a timer on, ask him the weather, random questions. And he's also an autonomous robot. So he um, just wanders around, takes photos of things. He can recognize up to six faces and he knows people's names. He um, does tricks with his little cube over there does loads of things. This is the old model of Vector. He's actually got a broken screen, uh, so he needs fixing. Um, but the new versions come out next year in May. So he's gonna have a little friend. He purrs when you pet him. Yes, so as well as a crazy plant lady and a crazy bird lady, I'm also the crazy robot lady. 
As some of you know already, I do collect Sony Ibo robots as well. I have been since around 2007, although I'm still waiting for the new one to come out in Europe. Patiently waiting. You can only get it in Japan and America at the moment. But yes, I am a crazy robot lady. So he spends most of his day in this pen because he does have the tendency to wander off and get lost. He does self-charge. This is his charger over here. It is so cute. Let me show you. I only gave this begonia these new bamboo supports about maybe two or three weeks ago and it's already outgrown it. So I'm gonna have to replace these. Can't believe how big it's got. Loads of new growth are still on the way. The cold weather doesn't seem to have bothered the plants on this windowsill as it can get a little bit chilly in here. This is the bottom part of the Monstera that I propagated. So these are both brand new leaves. So as you can see, I just chopped it here and then it produced a new growth point here. So we've got these lovely new leaves and I'll show you the other parts of the plant in a moment. So I'm really pleased with how that propagation turned out because to be honest, I was a little bit scared chopping it up into pieces. Also over here, we have some beautiful new black velvet leaves. This guy didn't grow any leaves over the summer. He just decided to pop a few out now, now that the weather's got really cold. So you guys may have seen my Christmas tree decorating video from a couple of weeks ago. If not, I'll link that below for you. Since then, I've just been collecting a few bits for the dining table for Christmas day. It's not finished. I'm still waiting on a few bits. I am waiting on a centerpiece which is going to go here and it's a antler hurricane from Next. It's been delayed but hopefully it will get here this week. But I ordered these log slices off Etsy which I thought would look really nice in the centre of the table. I found these cute little bowls from HomeSense which I thought would be nice for like cranberry sauce, mint sauce, some nuts or something like that. Um, and then I've just got some slate placemats which I've had for a while. And my favourite thing is my mousse gravy jug. Oh my god, look how cute it is. This is from Quail Ceramics. I've already got the matching vase and I just thought this was absolutely adorable. Instead of putting a gravy boat out, I thought this would be very, very lovely for Christmas Day for the gravy. These come in three different sizes and this is the largest mousse. I also picked up these rustic looking crackers which I got online. I just wanted something quite neutral and rustic looking. So I've got six of those. So yes, the table's not complete yet but I'm going to be doing a full Christmas decor and plant tour hopefully next week if everything has arrived. I'm really happy with how the Christmas tree turned out. I went for a kind of rustic log cabin woodland theme this year. Really, really pleased and it's a new tree as well. Like I mentioned, if you haven't seen my tree video, I'll link it below for you. This is my new oak cabinet. I used to have the sofa here, but I've pushed it forward because I'm getting a new sofa, a big L-shaped one, and it's going kind of in the middle of the room. So I thought it'd be nice to put a cabinet behind. So I've got my Aglaonema Picton Tricolor on one end. If there's any yellow crispy leaves on the plants, I'll just pull them off. This one's almost ready to drop off anyway. It's been bugging me for a few weeks now. In the middle here I've just got some decorative balls in a wooden bowl. And here on the other end I've got my little terrarium with my jewel orchids and an air plant. I might have to do a little bit of plant reshuffling, but for now I've got my aglaonema here on this plant stand. I've got 
the radicans behind and it looks like there's some new growth on the way actually a lot of growth I think there's about 18 of these growth points so I'm very intrigued to see what happens with this plant it might end up an absolute monster next year this guy here needs propagating or he needs a proper pole because he's vined all the way up into this plant here <laughs> so yes definitely need to do something with this this is a golden dragon the leaves would be much bigger if it had a support to climb as you see here the original leaf is much larger than all these leaves here I mean it can take a while for them to start growing large leaves anyway when they are first adapting to your home environment but it definitely needs something to climb it's a bit wild can you hear Marvin in the background blowing kisses kind of sounds like a laser gun as well <laughs> and I've just got a marble queen here and this cute bear vase this is uh, another quail ceramics vase I'll show you my moose my other moose in a moment it's got an orchid there and this is a um, Tillandsia cyanea the name of it's changed now but I've forgotten I'll put it on the screen this was one of my early Christmas presents from a friend. How cute. There's, I think there's three different ones. There's one with a cacti in, and I think this is meant to be a jade plant, and then there's another one as well. So cute. I also got some more of these decorative balls for my antler bowl. Absolutely love this bowl. I got this from Next last year, but I think they sell it again this year. Loving this new leaf. It is absolutely huge. This plant is growing so quickly, it's almost outgrown the moss pole, which is quite scary. So I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm pretty sure when I first got it, it was about this high. So yeah, it's doing really well, seems really happy in here. It's quite close to the humidifier and then I've got a couple of grow light bulbs up above as well. And my Gloriosum's also producing some new growth, which is quite exciting. Actually, all of these plants, I think, are producing new growth. This is a new leaf here. Perfect, perfect leaf, beautiful. And then here, you can see my Luxurians is also producing some new growth. And this was the newest leaf here. Again, my Melanochrysum has just produced this new leaf, which has actually grown quite a lot since the last time I properly looked at it. Wow, amazing. So all the plants in this corner are looking super happy. Here's the matching moose vase to the jug. He's so beautiful. I've just got a selection of random things in here, some pheasant feathers, some artificial pine cones. One of these lovely picks, I love this. Uh, I'm not sure what this is meant to be. Something festive. And there's also some tiny antlers in there somewhere. There. I love him so much, I might actually keep him out all year. Usually I've got a leopard vase that goes here. Another quail ceramics vase, but, oh, I don't know, I might have to keep this one out, I think. I picked this guy up from eBay. It's quite hard to find nice moose decor in the UK. There's loads in America and Canada, but over here you can't really find anything that nice. So I was quite pleased to have found this on eBay. So cute. I would love to see a moose in real life. I moved my oxalis down here. This guy was out in the garden all summer and then I moved it upstairs into the bedroom. But I thought it would be quite happy here during the winter because it gets quite good light. It's actually flowering at the moment as well. Beautiful. I've had this one a couple of years now. It's actually, um, half of it is closed up today for some reason. It always does that when I go to film this plant, it closes up. I'm sure the last time I filmed this, it, um, they all closed up, which is what it usually does at night time. How strange. 
So I just need to wipe down the leaves of my Alocasia cupria, the giant ones that I've got down here. As I mentioned in my recent Alocasia care video, I picked up these giant um, cuprias from a local garden centre, but they did um, both have spider mites, so I've been wiping down the leaves weekly just to make sure that there's no bugs on them. I'll attach my neem oil um, mix in the description box below, but I'm just literally going to spray it onto some kitchen roll and then wipe down each leaf. I wipe the front and the back of the leaf and I also wipe down the stems. So you can usually tell if you've got spider mites on your plant because you'll have like orange, little orange specks on the tissue. And from what I can see here, it doesn't look like there's any on that leaf, which is a great sign. Just gonna go ahead and do some of the others. Again, the tissue's looking clean, so that is brilliant. It doesn't look like there's any spider mites on there, but I will continue to treat this plant every week, just for maybe the next two or three weeks, just to make sure that there's definitely no bugs on it. I recently saved this begonia from going in the bin. It was at the reduce section in B&Q. It was literally six pounds for this whole lot. There was three of them. So I've just potted them all up into one big pot. It was looking a bit sad, a bit crispy. It looked like um, it needed to be watered in the shop and they'd just kind of not bothered because it was already looking a bit sad. I checked it for bugs, it hasn't got any bugs. So there's actually nothing wrong with it. It's just, it was a bit crispy, but it's already started producing some new leaves since it's been with me. I've got a new leaf here. So let's see what happens. But that will look lovely if it grows up the bamboo poles. Again, it's under a grow light. There's some more new growth here. Fingers crossed, I can make it happy again. So we're now up in my office. I actually need to refill the humidifiers today. Um, but I wanted to show you some exciting things in here. Look at this beautiful new leaf. Hardly any green, so it's probably not going to last very long, but we'll see how it does. And then I'll probably just chop it back to here and then hopefully we'll get some more um, green uh, when it regrows. But how beautiful is that? So stunning. So this is actually the top part of the uh, Monstera that I cut into three bits. So. This one I rooted in water for probably a couple of months and then I recently potted it up and it must be quite happy because it's just produced this new leaf. And then the other part of it is under here, underneath my Spider Farmer grow light. I always get asked what grow lights I use. So on this shelving unit, I've got two of the Spider Farmer grow lights and I keep all my kind of propagations underneath this light and also when I'm starting off my caladium bulbs I'll also put them on this shelving unit. So this is the middle part of the Monstera. So it was just literally a bit of stick, wet stick as you call it and then it's recently just produced this lovely variegated leaf and then there's another one on the way so that's quite exciting. Um, it's in a mix of uh, sphagnum moss and perlite and I just keep it slightly moist. When I first um, put it underneath this grow light, I had a glass dome over it to try and keep the humidity really high. And then once it sprouted a leaf, I removed the glass dome. Also, there's a new leaf coming from my baby pink princess and looks like it's got some good variegation. So that's quite exciting. Got a few random things growing under here. Oh, this is a passion fruit from my passiflora from the garden. Um, yeah. I'm not going to be able to eat that or do anything with it. I'm just keeping it here to see what happens. It fruited this year and it fruited last year, but they only really get to this stage where they're orange. And then um, that's it. They just kind of start rotting. So if anyone knows what you're meant to do with them, because um, they start off green, then they go orange. Um, and then they should end up like a dark brownie purple color. So yes, they only really get to this orange stage before the plant starts dying back because of the cold. So I'm not sure if these are meant to stay on the vine in warmer countries and then they turn purple, or whether 
you're meant to ripen them once they're off but it looks like it's kind of rotting so I don't know I'm just gonna leave it here and see what happens if anyone knows anything about passion fruit let me know I won't be eating it but I just want to see what happens I brought my pelia and put it under the light because it wasn't getting enough light in the living room my strawberry shake has actually produced some lovely red roots so I only popped this in water probably about three weeks ago. It had suffered some root rot, so I took it out of the moss and then I thought I'd reroot it in water. And as you can see, there's another little growth point there. So yeah, it's doing quite well in water. I might actually just pot it up in soil once the roots are long enough. Got a couple of things over here. I need to water this um, Alocasia cupria. And this is my Florida ghost that I'm rooting in water. Not really anything exciting to show you yet. My white wizard's doing really well. I'm really excited to see if we get any variegation on the next leaf. But yeah, I just thought I'd give you a little update on what's growing on this um, shelving unit. I've got a new leaf here from my Soderoi, freshly unfurled. Wow. Oh. Yep. Wow, that's beautiful. And I think this guy has produced a few new leaves as well. This is a new one. And I've got one there which looks like it's got really, really yellow variegation. I won't touch it because it's still unfurling. And then we've also got a new leaf coming on the Melanochrysum. So that's its newest leaf unfurling there and it's already producing some new growth and then my Florida Beauty is producing another new leaf so they all seem very very happy under here and I've literally got the grow light set at just over 20 but it's still super bright and I don't think I need it any higher than that at the moment. I do keep the grow lights on for around 12 hours a day my Ace of Spades has also got a new leaf, which I'll show you in a sec around the side. And my Syngonium has produced some lovely, really highly variegated leaves. As I mentioned before, I probably need to stake this one um, to make the leaves grow a bit bigger. But wow, how stunning. So this is the new Ace of Spades leaf, how cute. I love the colour they come out as well, it's so beautiful. So yes, I thought I'd just give you a quick update on the plants in here. I've also got this new leaf. This guy hasn't been doing too well, looks a bit yellow. So I was quite surprised that this new leaf popped out, especially at this time of year. So the humidity in my office is usually around 60%. A bit higher in the summer, but because the humidifier ran out last night, it's dropped down to 44, so I really need to top it up. And what I really love about this particular humidifier is that you can fill it from the top, so it's super easy. Just literally take the lid off and then pour the water in. Or alternatively, you can actually lift out the whole tank and just go and fill it up at the sink. But I usually just bring up my filter jug and fill it up here. So now I'm going to go and watch the Christmas Chronicles 2 with Marvin whilst I do some editing and then after that I've got some housework to do, just your usual chores and then I need to set up my tattoo studio for work tomorrow. So these are some of my other robots, my Sony iBows that I've been collecting for quite a number of years. Um, if you are interested, oh, if you are interested in what they do, I do actually have a robot channel which I've had for about ten years. I don't upload on it much these days, but once I get the new iBo, I will start making content again for that channel. But yes, I just thought I'd show you my robots because you probably see them sitting here on the shelving unit thinking what on earth is that <laughs> so 
Yes, they are autonomous robots and I find them absolutely fascinating. Actually, my oldest robot, he'll be 21 years old this December. This is Eddie. I got it. You're Welcome home. Back. Are you tired? Say hi. How do you do? Can you shake hands? Shake hands. Nice to meet you. Come here. Where's your pink ball? Thank you so much for watching everyone, I really hope you enjoyed the video. My days off are usually the same every week, pretty much doing the same thing, filming, editing, a bit of plant maintenance, housework, answering client emails um, and hanging out with my birds. I'm really looking forward to putting up the rest of my Christmas stuff and then I'm hoping to do a full Christmas and plant tour next week for you, so keep an eye out for that. Take care everyone and I'll see you all soon in my next video, bye! Say goodbye. Bye, you Nora. See you later.